Who are your dance inspirations and why? Who inspires you on the dance floor, or as an artist, or a competitor, or it can you can answer it within within those if you like. Okay, um, I have to like, I have to give thanks and uh, what's the word? I'm, my English is gone. When Recognition. You, you owe it to someone. Pay homage. Maybe that's the word. To to. Like, okay, obviously from, like, Vali and Luda were my two mm -hmm. female um, teachers growing up. Um, but I would say, like, my main salsa instructor was Oliver Pineda. Mm -hmm. um, he, you know, having all my dance background and all my training with ballet and contemporary and, you know, obviously made me who I was and everything like that. But having Oliver was really my inspiration, like in the studio. Like I always wanted to learn off him and look like him. And um, so he definitely was my biggest inspiration in, in salsa. Mm -hmm. um, in dance in general, who's my, who's my inspiration? To be honest, I, I, I actually... I have too many names. Do you know what I'm saying? Like there's too, there's yeah, too many two. names in my... I think as much as I don't dance like him, I would say like a, a genius mind of salsa for me, like out of everyone that I've met and work, and like taken class with and worked with, um, like Franklin Diaz. Mm -hmm. I really believe that he thinks like on a whole different level, like even just, just like when you speak to him, like, I don't know, he, for me, is a genius. Like he sees the world differently to like how the regular does, you know? And mm. um, he also did flamenco for many years. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I definitely think like, like I said, Oliver was my main instructor, which is a male. So where did my mm -hmm. female like styling come from? I definitely think that that flamenco flavor is what gave me that, that styling of mine. Um, Franklin Diaz and I, I'm gonna a uh, Franklin and Oliver. Those are my two. Yeah, they're not bad ones to have. They've, I think they both operate in very different worlds of dance. So Oliver yeah. is very strong in competition, and Franklin is very strong in artistic sort of niches. Yes. And yeah, yeah. If you had to learn from anyone, what well, they're not bad people to learn from, hey. Yeah, I remember when I was in New York City, uh, well, like a year ago. I we went were there to together, no? Sorry. Not when we were there together? N no, one before that. We yeah. were there together, the, yeah, so the second time. I, but the first time I was there, I remember I walked into his class and I'm thinking like, and I just had finished the world championships. I just, uh -huh. I, was, I was in America for a championships and then I stayed in New York to take some classes. And mm -hmm. I remember going into the class thinking, okay, like, I'm super excited. Like, I've seen his work. I'm going to be like, I'm going to go stand at the front of the class and like absorb as much as I can, you know? And I remember being so lost. Like I was so <laughs> lost. I, was, I left and I felt like shit, you know? Yeah. But that's something that Oliver always taught me and I teach my students. Like putting yourself in an uncomfortable situation is where you're going to learn best. So me going mm -hmm. to a class where I'm like enjoying and it's like fun means that I'm probably seeing all the choreography and all of the movements. So like I'm just plateauing. But when I'm in a place where I feel super uncomfortable, as long as I stay in the right mm -hmm. mindset of like not giving up and like just take as much in as possible, like that's where you're going to improve the most. So I went back to mm -hmm. Franklin and then I came back again the mm -hmm. year after specifically to take his classes. Mm -hmm. I struggled a lot in his classes because his obviously his content is very different to any other yeah. person that you go and learn classes from. Like, yeah, and and he and his students know his combos, like his footwork combos. He'll like, yeah. I sometimes you don't even hear calls. He must have like he signals goes, that he does. He's like, oh, and you're like, that, that, that. <laughs> And then, and yeah, then, like, it was so confusing because he, whatever these calls are that he does, like, people <laughs> seem to understand. And then, and then everyone goes into a combo and you're standing there like, I'm not really yeah, sure what's yeah. going on here. No, but, that's what I, yeah. I felt like, same. Mm. 
I was like, this is so embarrassing. And like, I knew that there was some, like there was a couple of people that came up to me and said congratulations because I watched the comp the week before. Oh, so yeah, like, yeah. oh, congratulations, like great news, you know? And I'm like, thank you. And I'm like meant to be coming in like on a high level, you know? And it was, I was lost, I was lost. <laughs> But the thing is, is that like, because because he has so much content he thinks so differently that's what's so beautiful I, i feel like in the scene these days there's like because of instagram and because of youtube and all of that kind of stuff people like okay there's a really cool move like example pablito style like all of this kind mm -hmm. of stuff like and then everyone's doing it and then mm -hmm. it's like okay so what's the difference between going to that teacher or that teacher okay the way they do it of course but once mm -hmm. you get the movement and you understand it like Do you know what I'm saying? Franklin's always doing his thing. Like he, he's not getting influenced by the world. He's like getting inspired by things, but doing his thing, which I really respect. Mm -hmm. I think one thing that I observed and, and it goes back to uh, people's backgrounds in dance. So your style as it is would be very difficult to replicate because you've got influences from dance that not a lot of other dancers have. So you've yeah. got your flamenco styling, which is something very niche, very unique, whereas it's not as common. It's not as uncommon for so many ballet and jazz and tap girls to come over to salsa. Yeah. So that's like a quite a common thing. A lot of girls that have done ballet in the past come over to salsa, but then yeah. not, no one has flamenco, whereas whatever Franklin's dance background and history is has led him to this particular path that he's been on for however long the same as eddie torres jr fernando pablito adolfo oliver all of their dance backgrounds have given them some sort of pathway to being to dancing how they are now yeah. so it's hard like i struggle with a lot of stuff because i don't have a dance background like i was surfing and playing soccer before i started dancing so like yeah like chubbo would say to me oh man your lines are I was like, what are you talking Who? about? Like, Chava? Chava. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know what lines were like, until I yeah. like, had to go and learn. Yeah, so. you just started a few years ago and you've gone from here to here. Like, mm. uh, you, out of, like, okay, out of the people that I know that have, like, just started to dance, you've become, like, a, a pro, like, and it's insane what you've done. But... but <laughs> But, well, I don't like compliments. I get nervous about it. You. Thank you. You're like, thanks. No, I, just, But, um, I don't like compliments. It makes me uncomfortable. Okay, Here's my so interview. Stop it. it. <laughs> But uh, no, you're definitely right. And that's the thing, like with my students, I actually, I put on in two weeks time, I've got a class going on. It's called Ballet Technique for Salsa Dancers. And mm -hmm. I really think like, I th okay, so as a competitive dancer, I always know how I need okay, to you, you have to play the game, yeah? Mm. You, ha you can't be just, just a salsera. You have to, there's a criteria that the judges have to tick. You have mm -hmm. to tick the box of technique, musicality, performance quality, presentation, such, and then also and authenticity and all of that kind of stuff. So at the end of the day, you need to be a great dancer in the niche mm -hmm. of salsa, like mm -hmm. I believe. Um, you know, you, I really believe that when you dance salsa, you can't just be like, yeah, I'm just going to learn how to do one, two, three, five, six, seven. You know, like I know that you went to Fernando Sosa's academy. Like I, 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 Artia told me that you guys had to do ballet class there. I definitely believe that ballet or ballroom dancing, things like those kind of styles are definitely an incredible foundation and base um, mm -hmm. for any style of dance that you decide to take on. Um, I, I think it definitely helps because of the technique in the line. And it's, and a lot of the time when you have salsa dancers coming in at a later age, that they, they come in and they want, this is another like thing that I learned from Oliver. As you can tell, I'm a progeny of him, yeah? Mm -hmm. He always told me about chocolate and broccoli or peas and broccoli, I think he says. And I teach it to my students now as well. So kids want chocolate because it's yummy and delicious right? And that's what's going to make them happy right now on this moment. Mm -hmm. And then you have broccoli that is not going to make you so happy right now, but it's going to make you happy in the, in the future because it's going to keep you healthy. And so mm -hmm. the mother, the job of the mother is to give the child what it needs, not what it wants. You know that the mm -hmm. child needs the broccoli, 
not, not what it wants, which is the chocolate. So the same mm -hmm. thing, like what happens in classes or also in workshops when you go to congresses these, day, these days, everyone's coming in, like teaching like a crazy ass, like awesome choreography that looks great on Instagram. But at the end of the day, you leave the studio, you walk out and then you can't re like, what did you learn in that class? Were you just trying to remember what step comes after another and that's it? Or mm -hmm. did you actually learn how to do the movement and actually mm -hmm. become a better dancer? Do you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And I just, I just think that these days, everyone's trying to get the chocolate. Everyone's just trying to like learn quickly and just get to the end point as, as fast as possible. But when you, when you learn quickly without learning all the foundation and technique, which is the annoying stuff, which is like drills, like just mm -hmm. doing your basic step and your upper body movement, like hour after hour after hour, you can only get to a certain point. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Totally. Like, I've done about seven of Oliver's musicality workshops over the years, and it's, it's yeah. reinforcing all of that. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I think it's the boring stuff that makes you that great dancer, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and some people don't have the patience for it. Some students will come in and they'll be like, oh, can we learn a curry? And like, it's, it's not, you know, I, I know what they need. I know that they need to just do this over and over and over and get, and get that base in. And then they mm -hmm. can fly and take whatever class they want at any Congress, at any workshop. And the way they're gonna do the movement is why they're gonna stand out in that room. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Totally. So, yeah. Tiff does um, online privates with me. Oh, nice. Aussie to Israel. I get my Aussie dose from her. Uh-huh. Yeah, because you, you've retained somewhat of the accent. Despite yeah, moving over there for like, anywhere, Jai. That's like, for like 10 great. years. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. <laughs> they can't answer you. What? Oh, man. No, I'm I trying to. Aussie, 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 and you didn't Oi, oi, oi. Is there's a Shame lag? On you. There's a there's a lag in the in the in the live. <laughs>